next data sets artifacts removal from ecg signals using filters and microcontroller based temperature sensor <clears throat> he his subjects of areas are in network analysis signals and systems instrumentations digital signal processing microprocessor and its application wireless communication advanced microprocessor microcontroller embedded systems speech and audio signal processing speech recognition electronics engineering electrical science etc he has a total experience of seven and a half years since 4th january 2016 he is working with srms lucknow as an assistant professor at a senior grade he has two years of experience in teaching at sharda university gurgaon noida india respectively four years of research work experience since 2011 till 2015 in the area of instrumentation and signal processing at iit roorkee he is working as an assistant professor at a senior grade since january 2016 at srms lucknow he has attended various training courses and workshops namely biomedical signal analysis till 10 to 15 december 2012 iit roorkee india and workshop on image and speech processing at electrical and electronics engineering december 2013 iit guwahati he has a professional membership membership and he has an achievements like qualified in graduate aptitude test in engineering gate 2008 a national level pg administration admission test got mhrd fellowship in both amtech and phd during 2008 to 2010 and 2011 to 2015 at iit roorkee he has been awarded with padma jyoti grant for research paper and a research project uh, submitted to drdo sir i hi- i heartily welcome to you over to you sir thank you shreya thank you so much sir thank you team members thank you organizing team today we will discuss about the robotics i am sharing my ppts So yeah, is this all visible? It is yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, thank you. So should I start my PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Again. So today we will discuss about automation and robotics in intelligent environments. So how robotics? a robot is helpful for the human and for our society these are the contents we will discuss first we will discuss about introduction then why robotics are important then automation and robotics in environments intelligent environments and simple environments both are there some examples we will discuss Each other research we will discuss and then so basically intelligent environment. Uh, sorry to in... interrupt you, sir. Uh, please yes, yes. put your slides on slideshow mode so that it will be very clear. Okay, now it is okay. Yes, sir. It's okay. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. So motivation behind or do important part that we are using. about the robotics so intelligent environments are aimed at improving the inhabitants experience and task performance so that is automate functions in the home and provide services to the inhabitants so automate functions in home means for the home purpose for making our drinks preparing home 
vegetables and different things so that is and that is automate functions because without interventions of the humans or based on the circumstances so automatically the robotics or robot learn based on the environments so that is automate functions in the home and that automate provides the service to the inhabitants second is the decision coming from the decision makers in the environments that have to be executed so decisions require actions and that performed on the device so we give the x with we give input to the sensor or from the sensor it goes to the working arms so that is the decision and that requires the actions to be performed on the device second is decisions are frequently and it is not a elementary device that interactions but rather relatively complex commands because input is learned from the social environment and that input to the sensor it goes to the hardware and before going to the action mode it goes to the processor and processor process the signal in terms of electrical signal and then based on that input actuator or hardware arms perform the work so decisions define set points or results that have to be achieved and decisions can require entire task to perform so based on this we can say this is the requirement or motivation about the robotics and it is important part that can be helpful for the our society why automation and robotics is useful in the intelligent environments or intelligent environments required for the automation and robotics so both are related interrelated and both are dependent to each other and these department basically based on the control of the physical environment so that is automated blinds thermostats and heating ducts these are the industry use automatic doors automatic room partitioning so this is basically the physical environments we are using in day to day life also and in industry also so this is the physical environment and we are controlling with the help of the input data second is the personal service type robots those are house cleaning type lawn moving and assistance to the elderly and handicapped office assistants and security services so these are personal service robots we are using in and it is going to day by day increasing so first we should know what is the robots so as per chick republic developer it is a worker of forced labor this is one definition but uh, japanese industrial robot association that is the big association and uh, already done lots of work regarding the robots and they already developed a good or efficient robots that is called zira is the japanese industrial robot association according to this a device with device with degrees of freedom that can be controlled this definition is more good or more significant in the in terms of words in comparison to previous one because we cannot say this is a robot is a labor or worker of forced labor because nowadays industry and even home also automation we are using robots that are those are not forced labor reason is because they are learning day by day our activities they are learning by 
itself based on the data and based on that activities and input they are learning and those are based on that they are performing in the coming days so we cannot say those are a worker of forced labor so second definition is more significant in these days a device with degrees of freedom that can be controlled so this degree of this degree of freedom we classify between six classes first is class 1 that is manual handling devices second is fixed sequence type robot we are fix fix the input data and fixed output next is the variable sequence robot then playback robot fifth is the numerical control robot and last is the intelligent robot so today we will discuss about the intelligent robot because this is highly required for our society and even in this pandemic situation like covid 19 and in hospital also where there is a big chance to spread of virus so this is more helpful and uh, but those previous robots may or may not be helpful because those are fixed robot or fixed work they can perform but intelligent robot are more useful in these days because covid 19 is spreading so to stop that virus to stop of the virus or spreading of the virus we can decrease based on or with the help of this intelligent robot so today we will discuss about the intelligent robot how they work for the industry and what is the intelligency so this is the brief history of the robotics mechanical automata this was the first that was we can say it is first working robot developed in between 14th to 19th century in europe and gradually it was innovated and it was first first working is clockwork driven for entertainment so that is maillard automation second is the motor driven type robot in this they used a motor electrical motor for the motion of the arm so this is the that is complete it is called robot and name is unimate so this is the developed first time in 1928 that is motor driven type robot so first motor driven automata and in 1961 unimate robot it was developed that is first industrial robot that was for the it was purposeful in the industry and then 1967 shaki robot was developed that was for autonomous mobile research robot it was based on the mobile we can move here and there so autonomous mobile research robot and in 1969 stanford developed the arm after this arm the research and industry was boosted up because they developed this stanford university this arm and uh, in every where in assembly line in the industry we are ever like drilling or uh, tightening up the bolt tightening a particular hardware so this arm was very useful and now a day this arm was continuously industries are using this arm so this is now very useful also and in future also day by day research is going on and uh, researchers are developing giving improvement in this arm so this is the important stanford output so that is dextrous and electric motor driven robot arm we will discuss in detail in further slides so this is the photo of the robot manipulator and this is that arm developed by the university and this is the arm and this is the actual arm was working this is the arm installed in this hardware and uh, connected with this motor driven circuit 
and uh, this is the actuator actually this is the moving the this arm to here and there and performing the task and these are mobile robot those are moving here and there so here four wheeler uh, four wheels here there are six wheels so these are mobile robots they can move here and there can transmit the data and uh, objects so these two was the initial robots developed by the developer and uh, these are working robots and after developing of the arm so this was the next step and then last is the humanoid robot these are the humanoid robot because here researchers developed two legs two arms and head so this is similar to a human structure so that's why these are called humanoid robots this is also one type so arm was the first and then this working robot and then humanoid robot so step by step developed by the researcher and uh, current days and future also research is going on in this so what is the autonomous robots we will discuss so to control of autonomous robot it involves a number of sub task first is the understanding and modeling of the mechanism so if you want to develop an autonomous robot means uh, that uh, robot will capture the data from the surroundings and will work accordingly so for that we should know the kinematics dynamics is required and automation is required so what is these terms we will discuss so these are the key points those required for the autonomous robot second is the reliable control of the actuators that closed arm a closed loop control arm that is we are saying it is actuators because based on the actuators those that arm is working so it is closed loop arm closed loop control next is the generation of task specific motion that is path planning how that arm will work because if we, we we are developing this arm for a particular task then we can we have to design a path and if we are using that arm for other work also then step by step we are designing designing the path then integration of sensors because sensors are important part based on these sensors that data goes to the processor and processor work according to sensor data so selection and interfacing of various types of sensors it is important then coping with noise and uncertainty this is the current research topic it is going on because sensors giving the data to the processor for the action but these sensors give the noise also and the input data may be uncertain so noise and uncertainty this is the important factor and that can divert the actual robot work so that's why this is the important words so noise we can filter the sensor data so we can filter the filtering of sensor noise with the help of filters and we can get the information but in some cases we get after the filtering some information also filtered and uh, that information loss of the information or less information can divert the robot so that is the big problem with robot industry also and robotics second is the uncertainty uncertainty that is actuator uncertainty sensor uncertainty in different there are there is a meaning of the uncertainty different types of data we are getting so different types of uncertainty we will discuss then last is the creation of flexible control policies so because control has to deal with new situations government give the policies for development so this is also important so now traditional industrial robots so for traditional industrial robot that uses robot arms and largely pre computed motions so in this diagram we can see this is the robot arm and uh, this this robot arm this robot arm this is fixed here so this robot arm is designed for the particular task in this industry so this is the assembly line 
car assembly line or vehicle assembly line so particular car is coming at fixed place and this robotic arm will perform the particular task so that's why it is a pre computed motion because that is already fixed in this arm so this robot will perform particular task and will go back so the requirements are for this type of robots programming using teach box then repetitive task high speed work in comparison to human few sensing operations because this robot arms required only to sense the particular object here and based on that input data this robot arm will work high precision movements pre planned trajectories and task policies and no interaction with humans here no human interaction is there there are some problems with this so traditional programming techniques for industrial robots lack these capabilities necessary in intelligent environments if you want to develop intelligent environment so these are the limitations for that only limited online sensing data is there no incorporation of uncertainty there is a no feedback for this no interaction with humans human person is not there only arm is there and maybe some uncertainty may be there then reliance on perfect task information then complete reprogramming for new task if you want to install that arm for new work then complete reprogramming or restructuring required for this so these are the drawbacks so now these are the requirements for robots in intelligent environments because intelligent environments we already know means that is based on the data we give the data only and uh, after receiving the data robots decide what work that robot will do or what output is required based on the data we never fix the path so that is the intelligent environment so that is the meaning so first is the first requirement is the autonomy autonomy means the robots have to be capable of achieving task objects without human input we are giving the sensor installed our as per our requirements so and sensor records the data so we are not giving the or human is not providing the data to the robots sensor records the data and giving Abla. the robots lekar chale gaya second the robots have to be able to make and execute their own decisions based on sensor information so sensors are the important part and that is called autonomy if autonomy is there then we can say that is the intelligent environments because based on this sensor computer will uh, processor will perform and processor will give the action to the actuator next important requirement is in situ human robot interfaces so use of robots in smart homes and that can require extensive user training those not requiring extensive user training because those are sensing the data and performing the work that's it and the sec second is the commands to robots should be natural for inhabitants so this is the requirement human can robot interface next is the adaptation robots have to be able to adjust to changes in the environments because if sensor is detecting some wrong thing or some hurdles so sensor will send the data to the processor so according to the data that will adopt the output so they should stop the work or should continue the work so that is the adaptation based on the environment so robot robot should be able to adjust to changes in the environment so that is the adaptation these are some robots those are for intelligent environments so first is the service robots service robots are security guard type robot delivery robots 
cleaning robot these are the cleaning robot and moving robot this is also cleaning robot second is the assistance robots so this is the assistance robot mobility services for elderly and people with disabilities so the for these purpose we can use for assistance so this is one example of assistance so services for elderly and people with disabilities now autonomous robot control how we can control so modeling of robots mechanism so kinematics and dynamic dynamics it is the part of modeling because based on these two we are designing the equation and model and based on that model robot will do autonomously second is this robot sensor selection it is also important because based on the robot sensor robot record the data and so active and passive proximity sensors are important so these are good next is the low level control of the actuators in this closed loop control is required because in closed loop control robot gets the feedback also and based on that feedback robot perform or remove the error so that based on that feedback this we can say this is autonomous robot control so low level control of actuators next is the control architecture it is traditional planning architectures maybe and behavior based control architectures and hybrid architecture architectures so traditional or architecture we are using in some places behavior based control architectures we will discuss and hybrid architectures all three we will discuss in step by step so these architectures we say control architectures and we are designing these robots based on these three types architecture so first step is the modeling the robot mechanism so in modeling we are using if we are using suppose this is the arm or actuator so how this arm will work so what we are doing in modeling so modeling we are designing these in theta 1 a theta 1 and theta 2 because one here is the motor and based on this motor this complete arm will work either this direction either this direction or go up or down like this so these two theta are important so this theta so forward kinematics describe how the robot joint angle configurations translate to locations in the world so forward kinematics inverse kinematics that computes the joint angle configuration that necessary to reach a particular point in space so theta and xy this is the theta and xy xy so this is the these three variables and based on three variables robot will decide where this robot the object is there so in which direction robot will robot should move so that is the so inverse forward kinematics inverse kinematics and third is the jacobian calculate it is very useful that is for the how the speed and configuration of the actuator translate into velocity of robot so based on these two two kinematics these variable decide and which speed this robot should will move so that speed is based on the jacobian so jacobian calculate how the speed the actuators will move or velocity of the robot so these three factors are important for the modeling the robot mechanism second point was mobile robot odometry so in mobile robot odometry the same configuration in terms of joint angles does not identify a unique location it may be wrong or may be right so mobile robot odometry is very useful this is to keep track of the robot it is necessary to incrementally update the location 
so continuous it will update the location so this process is called odometry or date rocking it means ki complete process and this is called odometry so what we are doing we are designing a matrix with those parameters x y theta and t plus delta t means change in the time so for every time the data is stored in this form and this is one type so we are applying it is a our differential drive robot so how much change in this speed of this robot so x y theta and this is the left and this is the right it is movement so this is the vx vy and this is the angular velocity so based on this x y theta robot decide how much speed should be there and in which direction the particular orientation should be the exact location so this is mobile robot automate odometer is odometer is important for the mobile type robot how robot control the actuator so to actuator control it is to get a particular robot actuator to a particular location and it is important to apply the correct amount of force or torque to it because velocity will come if exact amount of torque or exact amount of force is given to the robot or in wheels then robot can get the fixed amount of velocity or speed so in this way robot control the actuator so for this mass inertia and friction these three quantity required and the simple formula that is force is equal to mass into m into a plus b into v so velocity friction mass acceleration so this simple formula base that is kinematics and dynamics because this is the moving part so dynamics so based on this actuator control is possible second is the frequency actuators that are treated as if they were independent so this is also important and most common control approach is pd control that is proportional differential control that is pd so mostly in the robots or robotic area everyone is using mostly pd control that is proportional and differential proportional basically so this is the equation it is common equation for the force so kp is the proportional constant and kd is the differential constant so x is the desired and minus x actual so what actual displacement was there and what was the desired so this difference it will calculate then same in uh, displacement or differential control v is the desired velocity and v is the actual velocity so difference so in this way it will calculate the simplest mobile robot moving in the x direction now next point is the robot navigation so it is path planning addresses the task of computing a trajectory for the robot such that it reach the desired goal and without colliding with obstacles so this is important part because robot navigation is important without this navigation robot cannot move because any obstacle can collapse the moving robot so optimal path are hard to compute in particular for robots and that cannot move in arbitrary directions so optimal path is very very important for any mobile robot so navigation is important we will discuss 
then shortest distance path can be dangerous since they always graze obstacles because if mobile goes suppose oh, mobile is getting particular task and want to cover dash complete that task so navigation will give the shortest path and that shortest path may be not good for mobile robot so shortest distance path it can be dangerous then path for robot arms have to take into account the entire robot and it is not only the end factor so path is important for robot arms also so it is based on actually sensor driven robot control to accurately achieve a task in an intelligent environment a robot has to be able to react dynamically to changes on its surrounding so basically dynamically means the changes in the surroundings may be time being maybe one second before some obstacle was there and after one second obstacle is not there because for mobile robot mobile robot is also moving and human and uh, small cat and dog they are also moving so one instant obstacle is there and another instant obstacle is not there so to accurately achieve a task in an intelligent environment the robot has to be able to react dynamically to changes on its surrounding so surrounding changes dynamically and based on that dynamic changes surroundings so mobile should react and it should be effective so robot needs sensors to perceive the environment data and based on that sensor data mobile react and that reaction and uh, we can say that is the intelligent robot most robots use a set of different sensors so uh, sensors are important part because based on sensor mobile perform the task because mobile get the mobile robot get the direction based on the data so different sensors serve different purposes so this is important part information from sensors have to be integrated into the control of the robot so there is a control panel in every robot and based on that control or control signal mobile robots control the output these are some sensors so how it is working so intelligent sensors to measure the robot configuration encoders measure the rotation angle of a joint because arm only we can move upward and downward with the help of angle measurement so this is one calculation this is the angle measurement from here to here is 90 degree so this is the base level so it is called low and this is the high level so it is called maximum excited mode so it is high so 90 degree so if suppose robot is here and want to go here so means ki 90 degree movement is there because this is the center so from this base and this center and want to go here so this is about 90 degree movement so based on this high low and uh, angle mobile get the direction and suppose if you want to go here so calculate the angle from this base to this point so easily so based on this sensor data sensor angle data mobile work for the output so for this limit switch detect when the joint has reached the limit these are sensors ultrasonic sensor infrared sensors so laser sensor so these are some sensors proximity sensors basically used to measure the distance or location of objects in the environment and this can then be used to determine the location of the robot because based on environment data they work so infrared sensors basically determine the distance to an object these are the infrared and how infrared sensor work actually infrared sensor sends a ray to that object and then reflected back to the sensor so they measure basically the distance 
so based on the that distance they perform the work so by measuring the amount of infrared light the object reflects back to the robot so which amount of light reflected back and based on that portion of the light they perform the work second is the ultrasonic sensors that is called sonar these are important sensors and uh, actually industries are using this ultrasonic sensors because these are very precise and uh, giving the high resolution so ultrasonic sensors measure the time that an ultrasonic signal takes until it returns to the robot so this is the ultrasonic sensor work laser sensor laser range finders determine distance by measuring either the time it takes for a larger beam to be reflected back to the robot or by measuring where the laser hits the object so laser sensor are working in this time taken by the beam so these are some sensors so this is the work computer vision basically provides robots with the capability to passively observe the environment so these are the stereo vision system that provide complete location information using triangulation this is the triangulation two systems are there so they are calculating the triangulation so angle is there you can see here this is the angle so based on this they can provide can Hello. you describe the ultrasonic sensor? Sir, can you describe the ultrasonic sensor? Yeah, actually these are the sonars. In our, some books or some places you will get a name that is the sonar you can get. So it measures the time basically. Time or we can say frequency. Basically in ultrasonic sensors, how these sensors are working? So one transmitter and receiver is there basically. So through sensors with the help of transmitter, signal or rays goes to the or head to the particular object and return back. So suppose this is the sensor and this is the transmitter. So with the help of transmitter and this sensor, so goes back, transmitter and sensor receive the received signal. So reflected back signal you can say so and that reflected back signal they measure in terms of frequency or in terms of time because if we get time then over the time system can get frequency so based on time they measure the object so so that time they use for the activation so because signal goes to the object and return to the object um, back to the sensor so time taken by this wave so this wave time they are calculating and based on that time they can say what is the output okay thank you so much sir thank you so much and this is a stereo vision system so stereo vision system provides the complete location information using triangulation method. So complete location information means suppose this is the object and here this is the angle. So this is the tri triangle basically. So based on this triangle, they measure the angle and then after measuring the angle, what is the angle with this row, this ray or this signal and reflecting back to this signal or you can say. So this triangulation criteria in this stereo system is used and based on that they are providing the information. Computer vision basically it is very complex because mathematical modeling is there or mathematical concept equations are there so it is complicated. So it is complex so it is more difficult. Now we will discuss uncertainty in robot. So actually we are discussing about the intelligent 
सिस्टम टाइप रोबोट और इंटेलिजेंट रोबोट वर्किंग इन दी इंटेलिजेंट एनवायरमेंट so that we are discussing so for intelligent environment uncertainty should be clear uncertainty if uncertainty is there we we can not say the robot is intelligent or robot can work in the intelligent environment so uncertainty is the important major parameter which should be handled clearly by the robot robot system in the intelligent environments have to deal with sensor noise and uncertainty so what are different types of uncertainty first we should know sensor uncertainty first so sensor uncertainty they are basically sensor readings are imprecise and unreliable if suppose sensor is getting the data and our readings those are imprecise and unreliable that uncertainty may create there so that is the meaning of sensor uncertainty and we should check before purchasing the sensor or we should clarify with the data input data from the sensor second is the non observability so various aspects of the environment cannot be observed by the sensor so we should take care for the robot designing then environment is initially unknown because for all the robots are because those are human made or human is uh, designing or researchers are designing so many environments are recorded by the sensors first time so they should know about all the observation so sometimes non observability is difficult for the robots so that is also comes under the uncertainty third is the action uncertainty so if this observability is not there then action will be uncertain any action can perform the this system so that is the problem so action can face in this in this condition actions have non deterministic outcomes because data is not good and observability is not good because sensor is not giving the good readings so all three points are based on to each other if data is not recorded properly then observability or we can say observ observability is not there so that is another point and based on these two action will not be clear so that is called action uncertainty so these three uncertainty are there now this is another probabilistic robot localization how it is localized so exclusive reasoning about uncertainty using bias filters so how we can solve the uncertainty so this is one reasoning concept is there that is we basically it calls bias law so different bias laws are there people can read those bias laws and based on those you can solve the uncertainty problem so this is one equation these are different integration of these with the help of dx t dx t minus 1 the time is there so different different time and different different position so these are the location so different different location so we can get exact location or exact hurdles so based on this bias law it is used for localization mapping model building so these are important three use and that we can get from the bias law so bias law and uh, it is used in the bias filter so this is called filter because uncertainty we can filter out with the help of this bias law this is the deliberative robot control architecture so different types of architectures are used by the designer so this is one type that is deliberative robot control architecture in this in a deliberative control architecture the robot first plans a solution for the task by reasoning about the outcome of its actions and then executes it 
तो दिस इज द सेंसर सेंसर रिकॉर्ड द परसेप्शन देन मॉडलिंग एंड देन प्लानिंग देन टास्क एग्जीक्यूशन देन मोटर कंट्रोल बिकॉज बेस्ड ऑन द टास्क एग्जीक्यूशन मोटर स्टार्ट एंड मोटर कंट्रोल द वर्क because this decide the task execution and before task execution it decide the velocity angle everything so based on that motor control the work and then actuator actuator is the arm so arm perform the work so this is one deliberative type robot control architecture so it control process control process goes through a sequence of sensing model update and planning steps so finally actuator work this is the advantages of the deliberative control architecture so three advantages are main advantages are there so reasons for contingency compute solutions to the given task because we are using the equations in this motor control and goal directed strategies problems are with this solution tends to be fragile in the presence of uncertainty it requires frequent replanning and the re reacts relatively slow to changes and unexpected occurrences so these are some problems are with this type of control architectures of the robot now behavior based robot control architectures this is more useful than the previous one deliberative type in this behavior in a behavior based control architecture the robots action are determined by a set of parallel determined by a set of parallel reactive behaviors which map sensory input and state to actions so sensor what is doing it is reason avoid objects vendor explore build maps monitor changes identify objects and plan changes to the world and reason about behavior of objects so all these behavior based on these inputs change the behavior so this is also one robot control architecture so all these parallelly work and based on this parallel input actuator work so this is behavior based robot control architectures so reactive behavior based control combines relatively simple behaviors and each of which achieve a particular sub task and to achieve the overall task so robot can react fast to changes system does not depend on complete knowledge of the environment and uh, emergent behavior that can make it difficult to predict exact behavior so this is the reactive behavior based control combines that is and it is difficult to assure that overall task is achieved or not because parallel actions are there here these are parallel actions are there so actual task completed or not so that is the problem it is difficult to assure that overall task is achieved or not no complex behavior from simple elements that is brettenberg vehicle so complex behavior can be achieved using very simple control mechanism so that is brettenberg vehicle differential drive mobile mobile robots with two light sensors so this is covered this is aggressive this is for love and this is to explore so this is brettenberg vehicle developed by this so this is differential drive mobile robot with two light sensors two light sensors are there this one so based on these two sensors this robot work so complex 
external behavior does not necessarily require a complex reasoning mechanism. So, based on these two sensors, that can because two sensor data this robot is getting, so this data they can use for feedback also. So, complex behavior can achieve by using very simple control mechanism also. So, this is good art architecture given by Rettenberg. This is another example that is Samsung some, 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 some example. It is one of the earliest behavior based architecture. So, in this basically sensor giving the data and that data is in terms of level, level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3. So, behaviors are arranged in a strict priority order where higher priority behaviors sub some lower priority ones as long as they are not inhibited. So, this is the meaning. So, based on the sensor data, priorities are there and based on that priority actual work the output. So, this is also one behavior based and one queue is there. So, this is queue first task, second task, third task like this. So, queue is there and that tray and based on that priority in that tray, that behavior comes out. This is developed by the Samson example by the MIT AI lab. So, this is a variety of tasks can be robustly performed from a small number of behavioral elements. So, this was developed by this institute, MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. So, advantage of this reactive behavior based control architectures. So, some advantage are there and some problems are there also with this. So, advantages are those reacts fast to changes and uh, does not rely on accurate models because parallelly task we are giving by the sensors robot is getting. So, it does not rely on the accurate models. So, the world is its own best model and no need for replanning. Replanning is not required because as well as data is getting by the sensor and the actuator is performing. But problem with this robot is it is difficult to anticipate what effect combinations of behaviors will have and difficult to construct strategies that will achieve complex and novel tasks. And third problem is the it requires a redesign of control system for new tasks because we are designing a particular robot based on the behavior for particular task. So, that is the thing. So, these are some problems also with this type of robot. Third and last combination and architecture is hybrid control architecture. So, in this basically hybrid architecture combines a direct control with abstract task planning. So, behavior type of architecture control we already discussed. In this, this is hybrid type. So, with reactive control with abstract task planning also. So, that is hybrid type. So, this is the abstract task planning, behavior actions and pre-processed sensor data. This goes to here and then it comes to be for the behavior action. And then it goes to the behavior set and then motor works accordingly. So, here is the actuator or arm, so motor work accordingly and then again sensor in data or output, okay, were performed or not, it goes to the behavior set, then it goes to the abstract task planning. So, we can say in this one feedback is there, this is the feedback to the sensor, data goes to the inside and then behavior comes, then again sensor data goes to the inside. So, we can say this is work like a, a feedback path, this is controlled structure. So, controlling with this, this is the circle we can say. So, abstract task planning layer having the deliberative decisions and plans goal directed policies. 
so how the particular task will be performed so deliberative decisions given by the this abstract task layer and plans goals directed policies are also there and based on those policies the action goes to the behavior set and the reactive behavior layer it provides a reactive action and it handles sensors and actuators so this is the work of hybrid control architecture so in this and this is the latest and uh, everywhere hybrid control architectures industry is using because this is more efficient than the behavior type architecture because in this but mathematical complexity may increase in this because abstract task planning it is there this is one hybrid control policy so task planning and this is the behavior strategy so behavior strategy perform the work perform the task so at that end arm is there so this is the arm or actuator so arm is doing this particular object is there and may fix to some place here so that is the task so behavior strategy and this is the task planning so task planning we are giving in terms of because we are using the controllers so controllers are processors so for that we require digital value so these are the digital value 0101 and topology we are using here so this is the you can say tree so based on this tree or topology task is planned 1 2 3 1 c2 c3 c4 so continuously is there so this is another research part so based on topology and uh, tree matrix task can be planned or in one sequence simple so that is task planning and this is the behavior so these are the policies and based on this hybrid control architecture works this is example task changing a light bulb so this is the actuator arm is here so this arm is changing the bulb this is bulb so based on this task planning which bulb is decided by the task so behavior will work according to this task so that's why this behavior architecture control the hybrid control architecture is good in comparison to only the behavior set control architecture because in this this one task planning is there so this is the exact clear so which bulb want we want to change so we can plan the task here in the task planning set and then according to that task plan behavior will come out or output will come out. so hybrid type of these are important so hybrid control architectures also having some advantages because this type of robot we can use for in industry also so some advantages are there and some problems are there so advantages are it permits goal based strategies because we are designing the goal in the task plan so it is goal based strategies it ensures fast reactions to unexpected changes the second advantage it reduces complexity of planning because we are giving the plan or task plan in a few form so reduces the complexity but some problems are there choice of behaviors it limits range of possible tasks and the second is the behavior interactions have to be well modeled to be able to perform plans because behavior interactions are also used so it should be well modeled so this is problems these are some traditional human robot interface tele operation so in company so remote tele operation that direct operation of the robot by the user so basically these type of robots we can install in the hilly areas or where survival is not possible so we can install these robots and they will perform the task in place of human so that is the 
टेली ऑपरेशन तो यूजर यूजेज आर थ्री डी ज्वाइस्टिक और एन एक्सकल्टन टू ड्राइव द रोबोट तो इट इज सिंपल टू इंस्टॉल एंड रिमूव यूजर फ्रॉम डेंजरस एरिया तो फॉरेस्ट और हिली एरिया वेयर यूजर और ह्यूमन बींग कैन नॉट लिव कैन नॉट स्टे सो इन दोज एरिया वी कैन इंस्टॉल दिस टाइप ऑफ रोबोट एंड यूजफुल बट सम प्रॉब्लम्स आर देयर इट रिक्वायर्स इंसाइट इन टू द मैकेनिज्म एंड कैन बी एग्जॉस्टिव एंड इट इजली लीड्स टू ऑपरेशन एर बिकॉज टू कॉज कैन इफ कमिंग सेम टाइम कैन सम लीड्स टू ऑपरेशन एर सो दैट इज द सम प्रॉब्लम्स आर देयर सो वी शुड टेक केयर अबाउट दिस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डेवलप दिस फॉर द रोबोट फॉर द टेली ऑपरेशन so he uh, this is the human robot interaction in intelligent environments so if you want to interact the human also with the robot means based on the human and the robot should work and but it should be in the intelligent environments so type of some if personal service robot so for this type of robot controlled and it is used by the untrained users because Suppose user is coming and user don't know how it is should go. So intuitive and easy to use interface and interfaces has to filter use user input and it, it eliminate dangerous instructions and find closest possible action. So human robot interaction or human robot interacted type structure and the, in intelligent environments. So these are the benefit the it receive only intermittent commands because whatever the commands required because noise is also there in that in intelligent environment so suppose uh, if you, we are developing our robot in the intelligent environments and two persons are talking and third person instruction to the robot uh, robot come with the one glass of water so some commands because two persons are already discussing so that commands also goes into the robot through the sensor so robot should work should get the command clearly and work properly so that is the so receive only intermittent commands and robot requires autonomous capabilities so user commands can be at various level of complexity so this type of some problems we take care in this intelligent environment complexity is there because which command robot should work so that is important so control system merges instructions and autonomous operation also so strategies applied in the robot and based on those process robot works so interact with a variety of humans so humans have to feel comfortable around robots and robots have to communicate intentions in a natural way so these are some problems we are explaining some example that is already developed so this uh, robot minerva the tour guide robot that help the new person or new user for guiding the system or guiding the area or guide purpose so That is the आधे घंटे में आता है ना तो दिस इज द मिनेरवा एक्सपीरियंस सो मिनेरवा नेम इट इज डेवलप्ड बाय द सी एम यू कॉर्नेज वेलन यूनिवर्सिटी रोबोटिक्स इंस्टीट्यूट बोन इंस्टीट्यूट बोन स्टेट एंड अनदर इज दफेरेंसेज और basically it is the command input so graphical programming interfaces gui we can say so users construct policies from elemental blocks and problems it requires substantial understanding of the robot so because at a time different different or many inputs are there so because human interaction with the robot it is there for the intelligent environments so 
which command is useful and which command is not useful, the robot should judge. And pointing interfaces, so human points at desired targets in the world or target specification on a computer screen. Problems and problem is the how to interpret human gestures in this voice recognition also. So human instruct the robot verbally and problems. Speech recognition is very difficult. This is the one problem with this voice recognition and robot actions corresponding to words has to be defined. The robot has to be able to communicate its intentions to the human. So output has to be easy to understand by humans. So that is the robot interfaces should be there human robot interaction and a ro robot has to be able to encode its intention. Interface has to keep humans attention without annoying. So robot communication devices, some points are there. It is easy to understand computer screens and speech synthesis. Robot gestures because it is a robot communication, because through the communication robot can give the output. So it should be easy to understand with the computer screen and speech synthesis also and robot gestures. This is another example of nurse port project. It is also developed by CMU Robotic Institute. So in this human robot interfaces, so existing technologies are simple voice recognition and speech synthesis, gesture recognition systems, and on screen text based interaction. So these are the given in this example. But research challenges are there how to convey robot intentions. This first challenge, so researchers can go in this. And how to infer user intent from visual observation, that is how can a robot imitate a human. That is the thing. These are the challenges. And how to keep the attention of a human on the robot. The next is the how to integrate human input with autonomous operation. So these are some research challenges. Now this is the complete integration of commands in autonomous operation. How a system work for the environment or based on the environment. So this is the user and this is the environment. So action also goes to the environment and from the environment data also goes to the for the learning because based on the learning action goes to the actuator. So environment is the important data for the any sensor or for the robot because based on the environment action will be by the robot or by the actuator and that data goes from the environment. So percept it goes to the behavior element. This structure we already discussed. So based on this, this robot learn the comp learn the components based on this behavior elements, and then it starts for after learning. It gives the command for the activation, and that activation goes to the behavior element and then behavior element perform the task to the environment step by step. So the robot can operate at varying levels of autonomy and operation modes are autonomous operation, user operation or daily operation and behavioral programming and following user interactions, imitations. So some operation modes are also there in this we can change accordingly. So this is the adjustable autonomy and the types of user commands is maybe continuous or low level instructions for the daily operations. Goal specifications also based. So based on the goal also and task demonstration. So this is one example. So this complete structure is the robot agent because this learn the data and based on the learning perform the output.
and some command given by the user also. So that also goes to the learning components because suppose more than two, three users are there. So which command is work first or which command the board should perform and which command should not perform. So that is also based on the learning. So this is AI task actually. So artificial intelligence we can use here. Then it robot will be the intelligence for this. Now social robot interactions to make robot acceptable to average users. So this should appear and we have natural. So in this we record attentional robots. So robot focuses on the user or the task. Then attention forms the first step to imitation. Second is the emotional. So emotional robot. So robot exhibit emotional responses and robot follows human social norms for behavior. So in this better acceptance by the user, so that is and next is the human machine interaction appears more natural and the last is the robot can influence how the human reacts. So these are emotional type robots. So social robot, this is first uh, example, Kismet. It is developed by the MIT lab, AI lab, artificial intelligence. So this is one example. Advantages of this robot is robot human and that show emotions and can make interactions more natural. So this is the advantage. So human tends to focus more attention on people than on objects and human tends to be more forgiving when a mistake is made if it looks human. So that is the advantage. Next is the robot showing emotions can and can modify the way in which humans interact with them. So this is the advantage of social robot but some problems are also there and these problems researchers can work for the development how can robot determine the right emotion and how can emotions be expressed by a robot so this is research part and problems also so complete is human robot interfaces for intelligent environment so robot interfaces have to be easy to use this first requirement for human robot interfaces for intelligent environments in this robot have to be controlled controllable by untrained users also and the robots have to be able to interact not only with their owner but also with other people because user friendly should be robot should be user friendly then we can use for the society robot interfaces have to be unusable at the humans discretion so robot Human robot interaction occurs on an irregular basis. So frequently the robot has to operate autonomously. Whenever user input is provided, the robot has to react to it. So this is the important part for intelligent environments. And the last is the interfaces have to be designed human centric. But the output, so our requirements are specific. So based on that, so the role of the robot is to make humans life easier and more comfortable. So this is the aim of aim should be for the designing of any robot. Then it should be intelligent. So adaptation and learning for robots in smart homes. So intelligent environments are non-stationary because signals are non-stationary and uh, signals or we can say the input data to the sensor that is changing highly changes with the time time it is changing so that's why it is non highly non stationary for the intelligent environments and change frequently so requiring robots to adopt accordingly so adopt option to changes in the environment that is important part for smart homes 
robot and the learning to address changes in the inhabitant preferences this is also important point if we are developing the robot in smart homes these points actually we should take care for if you are designing robot or designing any device for smart homes second is robot in intelligent environments can frequently and not be pre programmed so environment is unknown and the list of tasks that the robot should perform might not be known beforehand so it should not be pre programmed because if we are using the robot in smart homes so any time data can be changed for the robot and the environment may be unknown so no proliferation of robots in the home and the different users have different preferences so these are some points learning to interpret sensor information and learning new strategies and tasks so this is also there adoption of existing control policies then supervised learning by teaching because some robots are these are the learning approaches actually for the robot so supervised learning and supervised learning and forced learning so supervised learning is there means robots can learn from direct feedback from the user that indicates the correct strategy or learning from demonstration that is robot learn by observing a human or a robot that perform the required task and learning by exploration robot can learn autonomously by trying different actions and observing their results so this is the learning to identify objects this is one example here we are applying the ai artificial intelligence neural network so this is the input so this model will identify what is this object given in the input so chair so this is the supervised learning so how can a particular object is be recognized so supervised learning can be used by giving the robot a set of pictures and the corresponding classification so neural network or decision tree and many ways are there so you just can apply here models and can get the output so these are the learning task strategies by the experimentation so autonomous robots have to be able to learn new task even without input from the user so this is also there with the help of feedback and that during learning the robot it has to maintain our level of safety also so this is example of reinforcement learning in a hybrid architecture so policy acquisition layer abstract plan layer and the reactive behavior layer so behavior and abstract we already discussed before these two layers we are applying another layer that is reinforcement learning so that is a reinforcement learning basically policy update and state information goes to here so it update the policy so policy acquisition layer that we are saying we are doing in the reinforcement layer so what it is doing so learning task without supervision so that is the work of reinforcement means forcefully it learns without the supervision that is the work of this layer so gradually we are increasing the layers you, you will see here first we are the we, we studied about the behavior set then we added hybrid structure we added abstract task plan and now we are adding one more layer that is reinforcement reinforcement so step by step this is the example task learning to walk this is the this learning this robot is learning by the walk so this is the walking robot so this is the task plan we already discussed and control actions in form of the signal so output is coming here so learning to walk this is the example so learning complex tasks from simpler tasks that is the scaling up means we are improving the robot so complex tasks are hard to learn since they involve long sequences of actions and that have to be correct in order for reward to 
obtained. So what we can do, we can break the long task in simple task and step by step, or we can say step learning. So that is learning complex task from simpler task. So we can divide the complex task into the steps and step by step learning is possible. So that is the, the, the hierarchical reinforcement learning, learning with abstract actions and acquisition of abstract tasks. So this is the scaling up in the robot. This is one example learning to walk. So this is walking the robot and this is the hurdle is there. So learning by walk. So there is half obstacle is there. So robot will not go in this direction, will come here. So this is the learning to walk. So these are some conclusions. Robots are an important, important component in intelligent environments. Automate devices provide physical services. And then robot systems in these environments need particular capabilities. So autonomous control system, simple and natural human robot interface, adaptive and learning capabilities also, and robots have to maintain safety during the operation. So this is certain. And the last is the <coughs> while a number of techniques to address these requirements exist, no functional satisfactory solutions have yet been developed so we can go for this so only very simple robots or single task in the intelligent environment like this and now day by day it is increasing we can go so thank you if any doubt or any question you can ask yes Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, sir. Uh, participants, do you have any question from the sir? You can ask from it. Would today's uh, session uh, PPT be posted for us? Yes, ma'am. We will uh, we'll try our best to provide you all the PPTs. Uh, session so and very well explained and easy to understand also. So we really thank you very much, sir, for doing this. Okay, so now I would like to call uh, Mr. Bajay, sir, for. Uh, now I would like to call Mr. Yogesh, sir, for the vote of thanks. Sir, please. Requirements for robot in the intelligent environments and modeling the robust mechanism, mobile robot, odometry, actuator control, robot navigation, sensor driven robot control, robot sensor, uncertainty in robot system, and the hybrid control architecture, human robot interface. 
and integration of command and autonomous operations learning sensitivity patterns examples how i would like to thanks dr sachin singh to explain each and every topic clearly and uh, thanks to all the art participants who hear the lecture carefully thank you very much uh thank, thank you so you. much uh, yogi sir and uh, thank you so much uh, dr sachin for giving us an uh, insightful session and now we will end this uh, day 3 with the shanti part om go shanti antariksha shanti prithvi shanti rapa shanti rosha shanti वनस्पत शांति विश्व देवा शांति ब्रह्म शांति सर्व शांति शांति रेवा शांति सामा शांति रेवी ओ शांति 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 थैंक यू सो मच ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर जॉइनिंग विद अस या थैंक यू टीचर थैंक यू